right, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. The Poker Go Tour PLO main event. It is a 25k buy-in. We have two re-entries possible during a six hour re-entry period. So potentially a $75,000 tournament. And this is what this week of tournaments have been leading up to. So I'm excited to see how I can do today. So after three days, uh, I felt pretty good. I felt I played well and run fine and was at a uh, small but respectable plus 4k. Um, this is where, uh, spoiler alert, things go downhill. I have several different things that I do for work. Run on poker, run on training, YouTube channel, etc. And I was just like had stuff with everything. This week definitely wore on me more than I expected. Gone from slightly good to quite bad. And I'm down, what is that, almost 100k? It is the final day. Um, it's 25k buy-in, we have two re-entries. We're gonna start deep today and we'll be deep for a little while. This tournament structure is actually pretty good given that it's a, essentially a one day tournament. You get a lot of play, basically. You get kind of deep early, like your 100 big blinds early. Then a few hours in, you're pretty short when stacks start to go in, but then somehow after the rebuy period, you're deep again uh, for a while. So I, I think it's a relatively comfortable structure. It's a very good structure given the time frame they're working with. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing today. I'm, to be to be perfectly honest, I'm looking forward to this uh, this week being over so I can get back to a regular schedule. But this is the event I've been waiting for, and uh, hopefully it goes better than recent days. So this first hand I open in middle position with ace-queen 4-4 four, four, suited to the ace uh, with diamonds and I get called by just the big blind. And the flop is jack 10-4 with two spades, uh, backdoor diamonds. My opponent checks, I bet half pot, and he quickly puts out a big check raise. Based on what I had seen from him so far, like stack size and, and how much he was putting in there, I felt like he probably had a hand he was going with. It didn't seem like he was bluffing, especially on jack 10x two-tone. It just felt like he had something he was going with. Obviously, I, I beat a decent portion of that range. Some of it's going to be combo stuff. Some of it's going to be top set, middle set. Some of it's going to be jack 10, maybe with a little something else. Um, I decide to uh, just call. We're going to have about two times pot left on the turn if I call. I decide to call and wait for a brick turn. You know, maybe uh, the turn is the nine of spades and he bets and I can just fold. Maybe the turn is the nine of spades and he checks a set, like he checks top set and I can check back and lose less. Um, so I, I think it's better to just wait. I probably am a favorite against his check raise range and his range that he's getting it in with, but maybe ever so slightly. And I'd rather wait uh, until the turn looks safe so that I'm doing better against his combo stuff. So I call, uh, turn is a brick and he bets pretty big and I just shove the rest in. Um, unfortunately, he has 10-10 and I do not improve. So I lose my first bullet. I get moved to a new table and uh, Nacho Barbero opens from under the gun. And I haven't played much PLO with him. Well, I haven't played much poker with him. I've seen him play. He's definitely loose aggressive in the no limit tournaments that I play. And I, I don't feel like he's somebody who's going to fold to a lot of three bets. Um, but I, in middle position, get dealt nine, seven, six, five double suited. While I don't think he's going to fold to a three bet, I think he's going to be opening wider under the gun than the average player. That's just a guess. And I think potentially I can get some post flop folds. My hand probably should be a fold. I'm not sure. I don't think it plays very well as a call because you don't want to go multi-way with a nine high flush draw and a seven high flush draw with, you know, relative, well, you don't want to do it at any stacks, but with, you know, not super deep stacks. So I decide to three bet. Uh, it gets back to him. He four bets, which is kind of unfortunate, but I'm basically flipping. I'm barely behind aces. So I call, um, get a beautiful flop of nine, six, five. I flop uh, rainbow, I flop two backdoor flush draws, and uh, with about 70% pot left, he checks to me. And um, I was really surprised to see the check. I think if he has aces or kings, he's just gonna jam. I was thinking that he either had some kind of ace, king, queen, jack 
that was just giving up or uh, some kind of trap. Now, if he's trapping with a set or a straight, I still have outs against either. And if he has a hand like ace, queen, jack, 10, um, I kind of don't want to let him turn a lot of equity, uh, especially in a tournament. So I decided to shove, but it was a weird spot. Usually when somebody's repping kind of a polarized range where it's like air or nutted hands, you don't want to do a lot of betting. But with so much in the pot and so little in stacks comparatively, I just decided to put it in. Uh, unfortunately, he had ace, ace, seven, eight for the trap. And, you know, I still had my two backdoor flush draws. I still had my boat outs. I still had the uh, eight to chop. But unfortunately, the board bricked off and I lost my second bullet. So I'm on my third and final bullet and things do not go well. The blinds are big, so every time I lose a pot, it's, you know, reasonably substantial. There's one, basically I'm, I'm whiffing some flops, check folding. There was one hand against a pretty aggressive player where I called down with a, a pretty good bluff catcher and I lost. And before I knew it, I was down to about 35K in chips, which is nothing. Um, I doubled from 35K to what was 75K because of the, the antis. And then I actually doubled once again up to 150K uh, and chipped up a little bit beyond that. And then there was a spot where there's an open raise in the hijack I call on the button with 10, 10, 9, 8 double suited and the small blind three bets. It gets back to the initial raiser who four bets. And I have a, a strange spot so I can call and be all in. Um, and it's going to go three way and the player who three bet initially had been really tight when that's the case it starts to become reasonably likely even though it's tough because of blockers that they both have aces if they don't both have aces one of them has aces and the other probably has an ace probably has high cards um, just given the way that they, that they've each played so i'm starting to think that my 10 10 9 8 double suited is going to have pretty good multi-way equity if i'm up against aces and aces i i figure that i have something like 40 42 percent equity in a uh, three-way pot, which is a lot to pass up, especially with the money that I've already invested uh, and the ante uh, and the big blind in the pot. So I decided to go with it. Um, one of them had aces, one of them had ace, king, king. I ended up running the equities later because I was curious and it was not as good as I thought. I had 32% equity and I thought I'd be uh, closer to 40, um, but still, uh, you know, plus chip EV to get the rest in um, given given the pot odds. But um, it was not meant to be. And unfortunately, my uh, note-taking ability when uh, I lose my third bullet and had to drive home uh, failed me. So I don't even remember the board run out. Um, but it, it was not uh, it was not great for the 10 10 9 8 double suited, I can tell you that. All right, well, the tournament series was a letdown. Um, I mean, it's what it's what you expect sometimes when you go to play tournaments, but actually I, I mean, I didn't really think about it, but underestimated the, the amount of loss that I could incur. Cause I kind of just think of it like, oh, it's a series of like five to 10K tournaments and then there's one 25K and you know, you can re-enter, but maybe I'll re-enter a couple times. You know, you'll cash a bunch, not a bunch, but like cash a couple times. Um, like the max, max realistic loss won't be that high. You know, the way it went after the first few tournaments, I was roughly break even or a little bit up. And then it was really just the last three that I played where it was three bullets, three 10K bullets, four 15K bullets, and then three 25K bullets, obviously with no caches in, in any of those. So I think the whole series was like minus 170-ish, uh, 175, 170 to 180, which I don't know, I kind of expected like 80k in losses on a in a in a bad ish series i just never think about bankroll requirements in tournaments because i'm not a tournament player i i never have been and never made that a focus um but really i think the the issue is my perception of tournament play uh is based on wsop where most of my tournament play is and when you play a 10k wsop event um a lot of them now will have one re-entry 
you know, you, you play all the 10Ks in a summer and you're not gonna have a loss like this. So the, you know, Poker Go series tournaments, which are one days, um, tougher fields, faster structures, obviously, and um, multiple re-entry, just different bankroll requirements, essentially to play those versus WSOP. And it's actually useful for me to know that just as a, I don't know, somebody making content and potentially giving advice to other people who are playing tournaments professionally um, or semi-professionally or aspiring to, play, to be playing, playing them professionally. So um, yeah, I don't know. It was a, a disappointing week. I did enjoy playing. I haven't played poker in a little while. I enjoyed even playing live poker, which I usually don't uh, so much. So that was good, um, but now I think, you know, I have a couple months of catching up on work uh, for WSOP, and I don't really know what I'll do. I never know what I'm going to do at uh, WSOP time. So one of the things that I realize has been a struggle for me in the past few years when I'm playing part-time and working part-time is that when I do these kind of one-off, oh, I'm going to play for a week here in these tournaments, oh, maybe I'm gonna go play cash games for a week or I get invited on a, a, let's say I got invited on a Poker Go cash game show. The losses are harder to deal with because you're not gonna get the chance to play again soon. So it's not like, it doesn't feel as much like one long session. It feels like, oh, I played here and I lost and now I'm not gonna play for about a month and a half. And so I'm on a, a two and a half month downswing. Um, I mean, it's really just improving mindset. It's been a, a disappointing week, kind of a sad week but I know that in a couple of days it'll be behind me and I'm just going to be focused on whatever I'm working on. Uh, so that's, I guess, I guess that's my method. Um, let me know what you thought of the vlogs and uh, what you'd like to see from me on my channel. Like and subscribe, all the fun stuff, and I will see you next time. Take care.